Artificial intelligence is transforming the U.S. healthcare system, and it could be driving medical bills even higher for Americans. AI is being used in virtually every corner of the U.S. healthcare landscape. It's used to diagnose patients by performing tasks such as screening medical images or analyzing heart monitors. Drug makers are using AI to try to find new molecules or repurpose existing ones. AI that could spot a tumor a doctor may miss or, you know, discover a whole new drug. I mean, that's pretty exciting stuff. But AI is also being used in ways that don't quite benefit patients, uh, to say the least. For example, big insurers like United Health use AI when making coverage decisions. Uh, in 2023, the stat series Denied by AI exposed how United was using an unregulated AI algorithm to cut off care to seriously ill patients, uh, often against their own doctor's wishes. And even seemingly benign AI technology like Ambient Scribes could be driving up the cost of care in the US. What's an Ambient Scribe? Well, it's an app that a doctor can run on their smartphone or other device uh, during a visit with a patient. It records audio of the entire conversation, transcribes it, summarizes it, and enters the details of the visit into the patient's electronic health record. The hope is AI scribes allow doctors to pay less attention to documentation and paperwork and more attention to the patient that's in the room with them. That all sounds pretty great, right? Well, sure, perhaps, uh, until the patient sees the bill for the visit. That's the conundrum behind a new story from my stack colleague, Brittany Trang. Brittany covers health tech and writes the AI prognosis newsletter for stat. We chatted earlier today about how exactly this AI tech is increasing the cost of healthcare. But before we get to that, since we are on the topic of AI, I'd like to let viewers know that I have a strict policy against the use of AI in any status report video. This channel strives to be the most trusted news source about health and life sciences on YouTube, and part of that is a commitment to not use AI to generate any imagery or video. And if for any reason I do feature an AI-generated visual, I'll be sure to clearly disclose it. But anyway, if you're enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe. It's a little click, but it's a big deal for us. And now for my discussion with Brittany. Hey, Brittany. Uh, we've been talking about doing this for weeks now, so I'm glad we finally get a chance to do it. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited to finally get to do this. So how do these AI scribes like change the dynamic at a doctor's visit between you know the doctor and their patient? Theoretically, it should only change things for the positive. Um, we don't know a lot about how patients feel about AI scribes because there aren't a lot of good studies on it. But what scribe companies are telling us is that patients that they've talked to say they really like that their doctor's paying more attention to them. It isn't just typing into a computer the whole time. Um, and then for doctors, like it lets them not have to worry about typing things into the computer. They can talk to their patient, maybe gives them a little more time. But a lot of the benefit comes from afterward. They don't have to remember, you know, all the patients that I saw today, what were all their um, details, because I have to write them all down at the end of the day when I finally have time to write them down. Or um, there's what's called pajama time, which is you know, you go home, you have dinner, you put the kids to bed, and then you go back to your charts <laughs> and finish um, putting all the details in there. And uh, since these AI scribes have been implemented, a lot of doctors have decreased that amount of time. They're, they're able to go home earlier and they don't have to do as much work outside of work time. And that seems like a positive because, I mean, we hear a lot about like burnout in doctors, right? Yes. Um, that's a lot of the return on investment that people have seen so far is saying, like, uh, I'm able to recruit doctors better this way and I don't have people leaving practice early um, or something because they're so burnt out and they're so tired. Um, so this tool really so far, the return on investment for people who are buying them has been that kind of soft ROI of my doctors are happier. How could the use of uh, an AI scribe like this impact the cost of a doctor's visit? It's pretty counterintuitive, but um, as these AI scribes have become better and better and more people have been making them to stand out, companies have started adding other features to the scribe. One of those features is coding and billing tools. So taking the encounter and saying, like, what billing codes go on this encounter um, to help the people who are in the back office doing the billing. Um, and because we have so much better documentation now, because the AI is listening to the entire thing and knows exactly what happened instead of the five sentences that the doctor has scrawled down about what they talked about, um, there's a lot more information in there for um, the AI or people who are doing the coding to look at. And so um, I have a news story out talking about uh, the impact of that increased documentation on 
um, the price of health care because um, because we have more uh, faithful documentation of what happened. People can totally justify it. Um, increase the number of things that they're billing for, whether that's how complex the visit was um, or to bill for other to code uh, people in risk adjusted plans with more conditions that they have talked about that the doctor may not have specifically written down, stuff like that. Before AI scribes, you know, how was this coding and documenting uh, usually done? Usually it was a uh, spot checked by coders after the fact if you have em people employed to do that. So uh, one doctor gave me the example of um, you can't code somebody with type 2 diabetes uh, with a foot ulcer if you only said the word wound in your documentation. Um, even though those are like functionally equivalent to somebody who's looking at the patient, the code needs you to say the word ulcer. And so um, in the past, like a coder may have caught that and would message the doctor and say, hey, did you mean to say ulcer here? If you did, can you go back in the chart and fix that so then I can code for this thing? Uh, but now with the AI, um, the AI can just write that um, during the visit and then nobody has to go back and forth about it. So you spoke to some AI companies for a story and they said that patients won't, uh, quote, uh, foot the bill for the bigger invoices their tools can create. But that money is coming from somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the people I talked to said, oh, the insurer is paying for this. The patient's not paying for it. But um, a health policy expert that I talked to pointed out that the health insurance money comes from the patients, comes from us, whether we use the healthcare system or not. So we're paying it through our taxes for our Medicaid and Medicare. We're paying it in our premiums. Um, that we're paying if we have health insurance, if we, we have employer-based health insurance, we're paying through lost wages because the employer has to pay their side of the premium. Um, and so that is money that can't be used to pay us more money. Um, and then there's also some amount of increased co-pays. And if you're, you have a high deductible plan, you're trying to still meet your deductible. So there's a lot of different ways that uh, patients um, and people in general pay for health care, um, even if their bill may not go up exactly. But for hospitals, this sounds like a pretty good deal. I mean, especially at a time where we're seeing a lot of uh, hospitals closing, particularly in rural areas. Um, so for hospitals, like this seems like they might be benefiting quite a bit. Yeah, this is good for providers, especially primary care providers who have been um, generally underfunded. Um, and this will help hospital margins. But you have to remember that, like, healthcare costs are a closed pie. If one slice gets bigger, it comes from somewhere. Somebody else's slice gets smaller. But for uh, insurers, on the other hand, this doesn't sound like such a great deal. Is there any way for them to, like, push back? Yeah, it depends who's paying. So if the government is paying through um, Medicare, for example, they set the rates at which they pay physicians under Medicare. And they could just say, we're not increasing what we pay Medicare this year uh, because we've seen these efficiencies due to AI. Um, there's other ways that the government pays uh, Medicare or Medicare Advantage, and they could change those. But for commercial insurers, especially employer-sponsored insurance um, for self-insured people, so like if you're in a company with more than 200 people-ish, you are probably uh, insured by your company. So whether it says, you know, Aetna or Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever on your card, that's not actually your insurer. The money is just coming out of a bank account from your employer. Um, and those people don't have a lot of power to say, oh, like the company that is administering our plan, we want you to crack down on this and that. Um, it's really hard for that to happen. And your company is probably just going to have to eat the cost. It sounds like there's really like no bad guy here per se. It's just, you know, different stakeholders uh, looking out for their best interest um, under the U.S. for-profit healthcare system. Is that sort of the deal? Yeah, I had one source who um, he works at AT and T, he uh, which is a self insured employer, as I was talking about earlier, and he was really concerned about like the increased cost from this. But he said, I can't be mad, like I can't blame anybody because these are just the incentives that the U.S. healthcare system has given different players, whether it's the providers, whether it's the payers, um, or these third parties trying to get in on the game. 
everybody's operating within their incentive and trying to do what's best for their business. So even though it feels weird ethically, you can't blame people for doing what their job tells them that they have to do. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much, Brittany. That, uh, that was great. That's such an interesting topic. And uh, your story is great. And be sure to check it out on uh, statnews.com. Thanks, Brittany. See you later. Thanks again to Brittany. Uh, be sure to check out her stat newsletter, AI Prognosis. It's always a highlight of my week when it lands in my inbox. Uh, and the link is in the description. Again, if you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. It's a little click, but it's a big deal for us. And I'm actually on vacation next week, but I'll be back the Wednesday after next. Same stat time, same stat channel.